All right then, people. Here I am at uh, one shops. KTM Kawasaki here in Birmingham, DCM. And I'm taking this bad boy out for a test ride. The Super Duke R1290. Now, I've not been on one of these before, so I don't really know what to expect. And I've never ridden a Super Naked before. It's my first time on one. And it's got all the gadgets and gizmos. Keyless start, believe it or not, on one of these things. And it's just about getting used to it. So, let me just figure out what's what on this. Clutch. Just getting on it. What a different machine this feels. The riding position is so bizarre. Wow, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. It's important to kind of point out that I'm not an expert on bikes, and I'm not, uh, you know, a, any kind of, as mentioned, accomplished rider. I have. A little bit of experience uh, on a few bikes that that I've ridden, but I certainly wouldn't um, constitute that to me. Um, yet I'm, uh, I'm 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 fully fully fledged expert in terms of uh, commenting on uh, any kind of bike, super naked or otherwise. But from my perspective, coming off uh, all of the bikes that I've had, coming onto a super naked, the purpose of this video is just to kind of explain. Uh, how it feels to me to give you my view um, and uh, just to kind of measure it against uh, a booster for somebody who's coming off that style of bike or considering coming off that style of neutral. Right. When I say I'm coming off a high booster, I mean I am, um, I've just sold my Gen 2 Suzuki Hayabusa and I'm moving into well, exploring the world of super naked because a friend of mine has a tuono, a prettier tuono, and he swears barlined by them. Performance, power, with all the with all the kind of gadgets and gizmos you couldn't possibly want without all the hang up of the super sport or a fared bike. Now this is as mentioned, the first time that I've ridden the Super Naked. And um, let me make sure I'm doing the right speed here, I don't want to get any tickets. Oh, I've got my uh, little thingy mirrors. I have to make sure we're doing my shoulder checks. 20 past 12. All right. So, yeah, so this is the first time that I've ridden a Super Naked. Uh, nearly all the bikes that I've had have either been um, sports bikes or, or uh, sports tourists. And um, the so if, if I kind of give you a history of the bikes that I've had, and I covered this in one of the other videos that I did when uh, I was talking about the um, you know what under the review of my, my Gen 2 Busa, um, that okay, where are you going to go? That um, I started off with a Triumph um, Sprint RS, had a couple of those. Um, and then I went to a Jix 1000 K4 model, uh, and then I went to a Hayabusa Gen 1, then I had a BMW K1200S, and then I bought a um, Gen 2 Busa, uh, which is the one that I've just sold now, and I'm wondering what to buy next, so I thought I'd experience the world of KTM and try the Super Duke and see what that feels like. And starting off, um, I've got to say the riding position is so bizarre when you come onto one of these. 
uh, after you've been on a sports bike, super sports bike, you know, sports tourer. It just feels surreal. Um, the, you, you literally, well, it feels like that you're on the very front end of the bike. That you know, you're at the. Okay, let me see. just navigate my way through here. It feels like you're at the, you know, the, the front on, on the front wheel of the bike. There's nothing literally between you and the uh, and the front wheel. Uh, whereas with all the other bikes that I've had. Um, you know, you've got the tank, you've got a windscreen, uh, a nominal, uh, as though it, although it may be, but at least you've got something. Here, you've got nothing, there's, there's, no, there's nothing here. Um, and, the, you know, the front wheel is literally just, just down there. But, um, that being said, that being said, it feels more like... Yeah, it feels more, certainly more... Uh, more comfortable um, and less intrusive in terms of your positioning. So, uh, what I realised this time round with the booster that I had was that the um, and I've done this uh, review on it last year when I took it to to France and rode it across Europe, uh, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. it you know, it clocked the miles and done the distance and all the rest of it. Um, but this time I took it to France again. We went to um, a road through France, went to Switzerland, uh, covered Geneva, um, and then ended up uh, coming back home. It's about 1,800 miles, whereas last year we did about 1,500 miles. Um, and uh, this time around, my knees started hurting a little bit, uh, my wrists started hurting a little bit. Um, it just felt as though there was a lot of weight uh, on the front end um, of my wrists and uh, um, and for some reason my knees were kind of clamped up um, because of just probably the peg positioning or just the way that the bike is. Um, so I thought, right, okay, um, I want to carry on doing long distance rides. So let me, let me kind of explore what the alternatives that are out there uh, and what they feel like. And that ties in with the riding position on this. It doesn't feel as abrasive as a sports bike does, um, and certainly as a sports tourer does. It's a lot more, it feels a lot more relaxed. Um, and, you know, you're sitting more upright, your arms aren't massively stretched out, you know, you're not kind of uh, cramped over the tank, but, you know, it's quite, it's quite comfortable, um, and it's a pleasant comfortable, um, you know, it's not like a, well, uh, it's a bit too lazy, or a bit too relaxed comfortable, it's nice, um, you feel like you're still on a bike, you're still kind of connected uh, to the bike, and, you know, uh, it's, it, you could quite comfortably feel yourself doing some distance on this, um, so I mean, so far it seems yeah, pretty good, pretty good, um, and I've got to say that the KTM is the first um, naked or super naked bike that I've ridden, and um, I'm at this stage in my life now, and some of you probably be able to relate to this, and I'm at this stage in my life now, where, geez, I've been 50, well, that doesn't even feel like it, um, so I'm at this stage in my life now where um, I'm 40 years old, and I'm kind of wondering whether or not um, having like a, a full, full bred super bike, um, sports bike is, you know, a little bit too young for me. Uh, am I a little bit too old to be, you know, uh, rocking up in an R1 or, um, or something of the like? Um, or, you know, is that, is that a thing? I'm, I'm kind of thinking that uh, I want I'm more um, pipe and slippers now and I want to do like my, my treks and I'm not particularly, uh, I'm not particularly accomplished rider by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, I can't enjoy the twisties on uh, the sports bike. My back hasn't got the patience um, to, um, you know, to keep up with a, uh, with a sport bike uh, kind of uh, posture and, and all the rest of it. So it's it's a case of, you know, um, as somebody who's kind of creeping past their 40s now into the mid 40s, what kind of bike do I want? What kind of rider am I? Well, I don't know what kind of rider am I, but what kind of image do I want to associate myself to? You know, maybe the, the sports bike are for young, the younger generation, uh, maybe the post 30s, 30 to 40 sports bike era, 40 to 45, maybe a bit more. Um, maybe a bit more relaxed um, and that kind of gives me um, something to think about when I consider the KTM and uh, I've only got on the KTM just to experience 
the the feel of a super naked and at the moment I'm, I'm enjoying it but the weather's nice you know it's it's a nice day it's not windy I'm not going particularly fast um, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the weather I'm enjoying the ride um, so I don't know what this thing would be like when it's you know bucketing down I don't know how I would feel about it but then again I don't ride in in the in the heavy rain but let's just say it's windy uh, I don't know what that kind of force would feel like on the uh, well, not yet anyway, cause, but I'm going to take it on the on the dual carriageway in a second. Uh, I don't know what that force would feel like. So all of the, all those things considered, you know, um, there's, there's there's a lot of questions uh, yet to be to be answered uh, about the KTM or about the Super Naked uh, sp generally, but specifically about the the KTM um, is one of the things is the, the the kind of color spec. And when you talk about being a little bit more conservative, a little bit more distinguished, well, what have I got behind me? Got a Honda behind me. Uh, a little bit more distinguished, a bit, a bit, a little bit more of a kind of, you know, cultured and heritage classic rider. You know, do you want to be tazzing around uh, the city with a um, bright orange bike? Um, probably not. Probably not. Uh, I certainly don't think I would. Um, so, if I was to consider a KTM, then um, it would certainly have to be something that's been a lot more neutral and less abrasive or offensive or in your face kind of colour colour scheme. Um, so you know that's that's the that's how I've arrived here. Uh, the first 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 very first impressions of getting on the bike are wow, there's almost a little bit of nervousness getting on it and I suppose that's probably because it's a new bike. Um, it's somebody else's bike. I'm I'm kind of getting used to it now. I'm getting a bit more uh, comfortable on it. Um, I'm not taking it above 50 yet, so uh, I'd really like to get it out onto the dual carriage and find uh, just what it can do and what the kind of torque feels like. Um, but the first impressions are that it does feel a little bit bizarre. Um, and the, the, the most bizarre experience for me was actually how how forward you are on the bike. You know, there seems to be pretty much nothing between you and the front wheel. Well, that's how it fe feels, and you know, there obviously is. But it just feels like you're right at the very front of the bike. Um, and then, make sure I don't trip the camera. Yep, good. Um, but then once you kind of get used to that, it feels pretty good, uh, in all honesty. It feels uh, yeah, Honda VFR, old school, 96. Um, it feels pretty good to be honest with you. I mean, I can I can see the appeal um, of getting on something like this. My 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 arms are aren't stretched out. There's not a whole lot of weight uh, on my uh, on my hands, and um, you know it's it's comfortable. Um, come on, pal. come on, mate, come on, mate. Oh no, you cash guys done yet? Come on, pal. Good luck. Okay. Um, there's not a whole lot of weight on my wrists, uh, on the palm of my hands, um, you know, it feels quite, quite comfortable. And the, the other interesting thing about the, the KTM in particular is um, how narrow it is um, around, you know, uh, around your legs now. You've got a 1300cc motor in this bike um, and it just feels like there's nothing in between your legs. Um, not in terms of power, just in terms of kind of girth and width and dimension. Um, you get on the booster and you know you've got a, um, you know, a, a 1300cc, 1340cc bike in between your legs. With this, it just feels like you've got, you know, a, a minus thousand. Um, it just, it just feels so thin. Um, and maybe that's just because of the, the modern engineering and my booster was a 2008. Uh, Gen 2. Maybe it's just because of the modern engineering of what they've been able to do and the way that they've been able to kind of deliver the power and, you know, set the bike up and all the rest of it, but it just feels much, much thinner. Um, and whilst we're talking about dimensions, I'm 5 foot 8 um, and one of the things that I realised about the Duke um, is that it is pretty high uh, as a bike. Um, you know, it, uh, I have to either lean the bike over slightly to the left to get my uh, to flat foot it on my left side. I can't flat foot it on both feet. Um, or uh, if I want to put both feet down for whatever reason, um, I'm on the tips of my toes. Uh, well, on the balls of my feet, not the tips of my toes. The balls of my feet. So 
you know it's uh, it's a pretty tall bike um, now I don't know how that affects handling um, because it is a super naked um, and the, you know they are supposed to be pretty good in terms of handling and, and all the rest of it but uh, but I suppose I'll find out as I head towards the, the dual carriageway how it, how it kind of feels around the bends and corners I'm a little bit reluctant to to kind of throw it too much into the corners because I've only been on it all of 10 minutes um, and again it's not my bike either and I don't fancy being hit with an insurance bill because uh, I've ended up dropping the thing trying to get my knee down in a corner so um, I don't know how the, the kind of height of the bike will affect its handling um, as, uh, as I ride it or as you take it through the kind of uh, the corners and the country lanes and all, all of that kind of jazz. But uh, so far, it's I mean, on the rides that we're doing at the moment, uh, you know, it feels quite quite pleasant. Um, it feels nice. You know, it feels uh, grounded. It feels balanced. Um, it doesn't feel like um, it's tall and gangly at the moment. It feels pretty pretty stable. Um, once I kind of get past these zones. Uh, I'll, get, I'll open it up a little bit and see how it feels on the open road. Now, I mentioned that I was kind of transitioning out of uh, the... Uh, actually, let's try a little bit of filtering on this. Transitioning out of... Transitioning out of the... It's actually quite nimble. Of the uh, sports, super sport, um, sports tourer kind of uh, bike. Uh, genre, if that's the right word to use, and exploring the world of super naked. When we went to France this time around, one of my friends has got a, a pretty uh, to own her, and uh, the way that he performs that bike, um, that's a thousand cc bike, is just as good as uh, a 1300 boost or 1340 cc boost of that uh, I had. Um, so the question is, what well, do you really need all that extra CC um, plus the weight um, plus the fuel consumption and is a litre bike sufficient? And he certainly proved that it was and you can have as much fun on a litre bike as you can uh, on a plus litre bike. So I thought to myself, well, you know, most of the bikes that I've had have been plus litre bikes. Uh, I want to say most, I mean the most meaningful bikes that I've had the Triumph were, both my Triumphs were 955s, the Jigsaw was a 1000, but then after that, the um, the, uh, the, the first gen Hayabusa was a 13, uh, after that I had a K1200, which obviously is a 1200cc, and then after that I had the second gen Busa, which is a 1340, so they've been pretty big bikes, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of mass to that bike as well, it feels like it's a big bike, it doesn't feel like it's a, uh, you know, it's a small litre bike, but, uh, the, the litre bike is as competent, oh quick shift, nice, is as competent um, and as capable in terms of performance and handling and everything else as the plus litre bikes were. So that really kind of begs the question, um, automate, do I need a 1400cc uh, or a 13 40s, uh, 1300 cc which is what the what the duke is and um i was actually thinking to myself well um i don't think i do um and the mt10 kind of serves that purpose as does the s1000r so you've got a lot of, a lot of liter bike um you know and you, you you've got all kinds of experts talking about um how the uh, Duke is, not the Duke, sorry, actually, you know what, let me go on the other side. How the uh, MT-10 is built on the chassis of the R1, and how the um, S1000R is built on the chassis and using the engine of the RR. They've been detuned slightly um, to, to make them more kind of comfortable uh, for road riding, as opposed to more performance-based track riding. Um, but, it's um, a litre bike and that's giving you all that performance with all that comfort for um, you know uh, under uh, under uh, around a thousand cc and under so do you really need a thousand cc plus bike and that's really why I sold the booster I thought right let me try the the world of the thousand super naked um, and see what uh, see what it feels like 
Now, maybe I should have tried it before I sold the booster, but I'm, a, I'm an activist reflector, I do first and later. It seemed like a good idea to sell it at the time, so what the hell, I sold it. Um, and uh, now I haven't got a bike, um, and I'm looking to get another one. And um, this does feel like a kind of viable alternative, albeit it is still a 1300cc bike, and I'd really like to get on a uh, a 1000cc and get an idea of what the what the feel is uh, in terms of um, you know in terms of power difference between the Duke and the um, you know the other uh, thousand cc super naked so the the, the the MT10 and the um, what let me just get on this corner the MT10 and the S1000R um, but first impressions of the of the Duke is that it doesn't feel anywhere near as nippy as uh, the the Busa. I mean, the Busa was oh, Jesus Christ! It was quick, um, and you know that was instant instant power. You know, you twist the throttle and it is there. Now I'm going to try that a little bit on here. Apparently, it's got all the aids and the mods on, so. I'll get an idea of how it feels. Okay. That is quick, but it's not booster quick. And I suppose I'm going to expect that. Um, you know, the, I suppose the, 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 it's a different bike, isn't it? Um, but the, considering that it is a thousand plus, uh, it just doesn't feel as just doesn't feel as quick as the uh, as the Hayabusa. Um, even on uh, even on even on kind of takeoff top end, I would expect it not to because you, know, you just don't have the aerodynamics that you do with the Busa. Um, but just on takeoff, um, you know that, that kind of the world of difference when you put your oh, Twist your, twist your wrist, twist the throttle. And you know what? At that speed, there's not a lot of buffeting. That's impressive. Wow, that is impressive. There is not a lot of buffeting at all. You know, I've got my... got my helmet cam on. And that kind of messes up with the aerodynamics on the helmet. I've got a shimmy, incidentally. Um, and... It actually feels pretty good. I'm sitting at 70 now on the dual carriageway. And I should go to the last one that fast, but um, sitting at a comfortable speed on the dual carriageway. Uh, fourth gear and speed camera. I think I'm gonna drop my speed. And you know what? It didn't feel neck breakingly fast. Uh, it didn't feel as fast as the booster when you twist the throttle on the boost and I suppose that this is true of all the other sports bikes as well you know you get that pull back um, you know the back end the arse end sits down and you get pulled back a little bit you need to tuck in and that's part of the thrill of delivering the power I wonder though how it would fare on a long distance road trip because that's really what I want this bike for or what I want from my next bike, the ability to sit on it and do 15, 1800 miles over the course of about a week, or less than a week. And I'm not entirely sure, I've not heard uh, great things about the seat on this um, in terms of comfort and just the ability to put hours in the saddle. Um, it does feel a little bit firm, um, but the riding position is very good. Um, you know, the, I've got to, I've got to say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being being won over by the uh, the riding position on the Super Naked. Uh, the first experience of the, on the KTM is is a positive one. It's a positive one. Um, now I need to find a bloody petrol station. run out of fuel. So, oh, the Ute them. Okay, so we're coming into some twisties. Let's see, oh, 
Put a bit of water on the road, careful about that. A bit of debris on the road as well. Okay, so, you know, I can't fully say whether or not it is. I mean, my boost is my bike. I mean, I bought that because I kind of fell in love with it. So I've got that attachment issue. And it's the second one that I've had. The first was a first gen, second was a, uh, obviously a gen two. Um, and this is my first experience on any kind of super naked bike. So I don't know how, well, there's a grit on the road. Ooh, that felt like a bit of a V-twin. You come off the cl uh, come off the throttle and the power just automatically boom. So that on or off, it doesn't slowly progress down. Interesting. Um, a lot of gravel on the road, what's wrong with you people that live in the countryside? Oh, is that car pulling out? Stay there, love. Alright, I'm going to have to pull over and find the petrol station because I'm not comfortable with the fact that the fuel's almost empty and I don't know where the bloody hell the petrol station is. So, we'll be back once I've found the fuel stop. The brakes feel a little bit spongy on this. I don't know if this is a particular model or if that's the characteristic of the KTMs. It just feels like there's uh, there's a lot of travel in the brake, and uh, it also feels I don't know if it runs a wet clutch or a dry clutch, but it feels very motory. If that makes sense, you don't have that burble or that grunt like you do with um, the Busa or similar kind of similar kind of sports bikes and um, it just feels I don't know if that's, the, if that's just the can um, that makes a difference because the boost has got or had twin Yoshis on it which sounded beautiful um, but this sounds more poppy as opposed to deep and bassy steady on there mister and um, it doesn't feel as talky as the Rusa was. I've really got to stop making that comparison tonight. It's not a Busa, it's not a Busa, it's a Super Naked. But it still is a 1300. So yeah, talking about, whilst we're hunting for this petrol station, talking about the alternatives, uh, S1000R, uh, Yamaha MT10, but the Yamaha again looks a little bit young, uh, for, for my liking, I think that it's one of those bikes, you know, it's, it's like I've got that transformer look. Um, if I buy it in five years or three years time, will that still look, you know, uh, current and fresh or will that look kind of strange and odd? Um, I don't know. And, uh, you know, it, it, the kind of colour scheme that I like at the moment has these bright, bright fluorescent uh, yellow rims on it, which I'm not entirely sure about. So. The other, other one is the um, S1000R, you know, they do a lovely, I think, anniversary colour in that white with gold rims. And that's really tickled my fancy that as I do, I do like that. Um, let's try and corner on this. But I, oh, I did squats yesterday as well, my legs are stiff so it's probably not the best time to be trying to lean over. Um, but then, equally, there's the BMW R9 T. Um, and I do like that, I do like the R90, purely because, you know, it's got that kind of, that gentleman look that I'm after. Um, you know, that kind of distinguished rider's look. You could go there with your kind of leather jacket with the fur lined insides and collars and, you know, with your pipe and your cigar and pull up, have a coffee, smoke it and away you go. 40 plus, that's what I like. Um, am I able to do that? Here for this a little bit damp. Am I able to do that with this? I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced that I am. Um, certainly not in this colour, bright bloody orange. Um, but maybe the black one I would be able to just with a little bit of orange detailing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Alright folks, I found the petrol station and as fate would have it, I'm facing the wrong way. I've got to go back that way. And and get to the petrol station. Hey, up, Rocky. Right. Um, 
where the shoulder checks really bloody come in. Come in handy. Let's try and turn this thing. On the gravel. Turning circle. Yeah, not too bad. Short turn the gear. Pleasantly surprised to be honest with you. Um, the first experience on a super naked, I'm really kind of enjoying it. And I think I probably will make the transition. Whether this is the right bike for me, I don't know. Because um, I haven't tried the others yet. I haven't tried the... Um, the MT-10, I haven't tried the um, S1000R. And I really need to kind of have get a feel for those before I commit. But so far, I think that anybody who... Uh, switches across. I think they'd be pleasantly surprised. I think that you know what, they'd uh, they'd, they'd enjoy the the experience uh, because it is it is different, and with it being different, you know, it's it's just about deciding for the individual whether that's just a kind of a momentary interest or whether that's something more long term. All right, managed to fuel up and get to where I am. Thank God. Now, I'm going to try and get back. I'm used to having all my little gadgets and gizmos on my bike. So I've got the yoke stand for my phone, got a ramp mount. I've got my ultimate ear earphones. Oh, just went over then. Got my ultimate ear earphones connected to my phone via Bluetooth. And you know, I know exactly where I'm going. So let's plant this baby and see what it feels like. Now that I've got some fuel in it. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, so I think I was a little bit sheepish earlier on. And I wasn't entirely comfortable twisting the throttle. But now that I am, you know what? It does pull you back, the arse end does sit down on it, and it does lift its dress and run. And underneath that dress it's got some sprinting trainers on, by the looks of it. And it's, it's, a, it's a pleasurable experience, it certainly feels nice and this is what really is about for me, being able to sit on I'm quite comfortable as well, being able to sit on some of these longer roads and firstly navigate through the traffic um, and secondly do it comfortably so now that I'm doing about, you know, on, on the dual carriageway doing 70 on top uh, I can feel the, the what's it called, uh, the wind um, and I suppose that would probably increase depending upon the weather condition and depending upon what you're riding through so that's something to be conscious about, but I think once, once you get past the initial reservations, you get that does feel strong pull back. And that's not because of the torque of the bike, that's just because of the weight resistance. So. Oh, oh speed camera, I'm going to drop it down to 60. This is where the Brembo's balls come in. Spongy they may be. But useful nevertheless. The Super Duke's nice, I mean, it's, it's, at the moment, where I'm thinking of it, is that it's, it hasn't wowed me. It's not been like, yeah, I want to get one of these. Um, and I've been on it probably for about 50 minutes or so. Um, it's not like, yeah, I definitely need to get one of these. I'm going to get one of these and, and that's it, the sign on the dotted line. It's been right, okay, it's been interesting. It's been my first experience on a bike that firstly I don't own and secondly that isn't fed. So, you know, it's, uh, it's understanding what the other offerings in the, you know, in the field of super nakeds have to offer and whether they kind of justify to me that, right, okay, yeah. 
Go for super naked. I don't know yet. And the, the, the real, I suppose, acid test for me will be in the, the R90. Now, I'm not expecting the R90 to be anywhere near as fast as the Hayabusa, so, you know. Um, but, I just want to kind of get a feel of what that feels like as a more kind of modern, retro, whatever the bloody hell it's called. So, yeah. That's, oh, plane landing. That's how it's felt for me. It's been an interesting ride. Uh, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've had a little bit of fun on it. I don't think an hour, when you're spending, I mean, these kind of bikes are asking like 12, 13,000 pounds for. When you're spending that kind of money, in all honesty, you need more than an hour on it. You need about half a day on it um, to be able to tell you whether or not it's the right bike for you. And if you're going to spend that kind of money, in my opinion, um, you need to take a range of offerings um, to understand, you know, how the other bikes fare in the league um, before you commit to any one. Um, so this one particular model, or the one that I was looking at with all the gadgets and gizmos on it, was uh, about £13,000. Um, the S1000R that I'm looking at is around between nine and £10,000. The Yamaha is a little bit cheaper. Uh, but you know, you're, you're talking serious, serious money, so I'm the kind of person that won't spend that kind of money unless I've had a look at what else there is in the field. Unless I've tried it, probably tried it a couple of three times and then committed to purchasing one. What I will say about the Duke is that it does get a lot of looks. Uh, and this is a, a 2019 bike. Um, so it is brand new, literally out of the showroom, out of the box. It's got what on it? About 400 miles on it, 380 miles on it. And it does get a lot of looks. Um, and people look at it and, you know, they comment on it. And that's nice. That's a, that's a nice feeling. Um, but is it worth 13 grand? That's what you've got to weigh up. And part of me thinks that a 13 grand bike should just wow me. 14 grand bike should just wow me. You know what? Yeah. I want that. And maybe if I have a second test ride on it, I'll feel differently about it. I think that, yeah, once I've been on the MT-10, once I've been on the S1000R and the R90, I think that, yeah, the pen in comparison to the Duke. At, the moment, at this moment in time, I don't know that. So in the absence of that knowledge and in the absence of that clarity, uh, and the fact that it's not kind of convinced me to the point where I think that, yeah, this is absolutely what I want, um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it yet. It's nice, I've enjoyed it, um, I like it, but then again, it's a nice day to be out biking as well. Um, you know, so maybe that's got something to do with it. I've enjoyed the actual bike in and of itself. I've enjoyed the experience on the bike. Um, it's felt just a little bit clunky to me um, over the course of the hour that I've been riding it. It just felt like it's a little bit you know, the, as I mentioned earlier on, it hasn't got that smoothness that the Jap engine's got. Um, it hasn't got that burble, it hasn't got that rumble. Um, it just feels, when you when you twist the throttle, it just feels a bit more, a bit more pokey. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a criticism, it's just an observation. Um, but I am leaning towards this riding position. It's the first time I've experienced it. The last time I think I had anywhere near uh, a naked bike was the Suzuki Bandit 600, which I had for all of 23 and a half hours. Because some cunt, pardon my French, decided to steal it from outside of my workplace. Oh, camera facing the other way, perfect. I'm just trying to filter. And stole it. Um, bought it on a Sunday at about s 6 o'clock, by half 5 on the Monday the evening it was gone, um, and that was the end of the uh, the Bandit, and uh, I remember riding the Bandit thinking, actually, you know what, this riding position is quite nice, uh, and again, I, I got on the Bandit after uh, the, the, the first gen Hayabusa, and it felt like, Jesus Christ, come on, twist the, twist the throttle, wait for something to happen, um, and it just didn't. It's actually not bad at filtering. It's quite a
little bit of vibration that comes through as you kind of hit the red line. Foot pegs and in your ass. Pardon me, in your dear ear. Um, maybe that's just the way that they're kind of engine structured and engineered. Possibly, don't know. But it's an observation. So, thoughts, final thoughts on the old KTM. I'll say the old KTM, the brand new KTM. I like it. I like it a lot. But, and there is a but, is it something I would go back and say to the fella, you know what, I want it mate. Show me where, show me where to sign up. I don't know. Don't know. So yeah. Let's just enjoy the rest of the ride now. From Suzuki Hayabusa to the super naked 